are going to be going into small fortress of lines. Impala, of course, on that signature Queen Eye, and I'm seeing fiend on that. I'm seeing fiend on that Queen Eye, and I'm getting a little bit. I'm getting a little bit excited. Yeah, always nice to see a Queen Eye representative, and Impala is still going to be left without a weapon. And uh, Fiend able to get that weapon toss, and now picking up the Katars as well. This is not the kind of opening that Impala would have liked. Fiend is just continuing to deprive him of any weapons. It's like 30 seconds, dude. Super good start right now from Fiend. I mean, this is bullying. This is just straight up bullying. Impala finally able to pick up that spear. He is able to get some damage on the board. Tries to go for that sideline into Nair as well. Fiend's not going to be falling for it though. And Impala, I mean, you can see right here, this is why Fiend uh, didn't want Impala to pick up a weapon. You want to keep him on the hunt. You don't want any of this to happen to you. And Impala went for like the delayed GCD light. Interesting. Not able to catch that dodge though. And at the moment, holding on to the stage. Not able to get the jump read with the side out. Fiend getting the D light and almost catching Impala on the way back down to the ground. Unfortunately, just a little bit too close. And now this is just about as even of a game as we can get until Impala finds that recovery, tossing out the weapon and preferring to hold on to the bow. Going to be committing to that bow to try and find that knockout. He's able to pick up the D-Line recovery to be finally able to pick mm -hmm. that stock off. Probably, yeah, going to be sticking to the bow. Picked up just the second one there. Fiend very quickly able to pick up that weapon. And the DC connects as well. Super, super good comeback for him. Okay, Impala now, once again, completely even game we have at the moment. Dashing in, dashing out, looking for some on our neutralites. Picking up the spear now. Let's see what's gonna happen here. Impala just gonna try to zone and keep away Fiend. Fiend gonna be looking for an opening with okay. Downer, but Impala. what a huge extension. Super, super big to be able to pick up that dodge there. Incredibly satisfying combo to rack up some damage, but Fiend, he's on those guitars. He's going to be able to take that back as soon as possible. He's just not able to find anything. He can't find a sidelight. This is such a ridiculously even match uh, so far, right? Both of them have been going back and forth, and now Fiend finally able to get the whip punish, putting him into the Katari's blender, dealing so much damage now, and now putting Impala offstage in a bit of a nasty position for just a second. The main thing is also, like, not only is the neutral even, but how much damage they get out of every single opening that they do find for themselves is also super even. Impala, if he finds an end light, if he finds a side light, he doesn't just go for that one hit. He keeps hammering in, going for as many attacks as he possibly can, and Fiend is doing the exact same thing on those Katars. Oh, but Impala is so bold offstage with no weapon, almost got that edge guard, and now picking up the bow as well, gonna be now looking for the D light to maybe combo it into the cover. Just backing off a little bit, popping out a D sig as well, and now Fiend offstage. With guitars? Oh no. Okay, I thought that got really scary okay. for Impala for a second. Impala did get that there on the way out though, and he is going to be, I would assume, sticking to that uh, uh, that spear, which he will indeed. Able to pick up a Nair, a Sayer, trying to go for the second Nair as well. Impala right now in a flow state with this spear out on the ground, picking up so much damage, and Fiend is just now finally able to get a little bit of ground beneath his feet. Yeah, we're seeing the Spirito come out now. Fiend, excellent. Desync just as a keep away option. Impala was not expecting it. That also does come out and Impala... So early. Oh, no, no way, dude. That side signature sent him flying. You do not mess around with Queen Eye Spear signatures. No, not at all. Impala basically got hit by all of them. I want to see... Oh, man, I wish we could get the post-game stats on, like, how many uh, Athene signatures actually ended up connecting them, but I'm pretty sure it was they all hit of so them. so hard. Especially, I saw he was utilizing that Qatar neutral signature a little bit. Something that you only really see from the best of the best Queen Eye players, right? To be able to line that one up. Spear side sig at the end of uh, at the end as well. Hit super hard. Not a lot of players use it. Fiend definitely knows his way around them, and you can see Impala trying to get composed. We're moving into the next game, speaking to himself Three, a little bit, two, and we are going one, to be seeing the same four. stage with the same legends. Yeah, that was kind of the X factor that game, wasn't it? Because it felt like Impala and Fiend were super evenly matched. And that was the only thing that Fiend had over Impala in that moment because of how much damage it dealt and how nasty of a position it actually put Impala into. That being said, they seemed almost completely evenly matched that game one. They were very, very evenly matched, yes, but I mean, Fiend, he did really just have that. You mentioned the X Factor with the signatures. I was talking about, like, in the second stock, how both of the players were able to get a lot of damage out of their interactions. Impala kind of lost that magic towards the end of the game, and Fiend was just able to pick up a lot of damage that comes out in quick bursts. I mean, we're Ooh. seeing it right there. Fiend finds one there, he doesn't stop there. He goes for the side, he goes for the DC, he goes for anything that he might be able to get. 
He's getting a lot of damage now at this point. Impala just whipping a lot on the ground. Whipping that delay. It does not matter. He's not able to get the extension. That's the neutral light. Fiend jumping out there just in case Impala decided to dodge out. And now, Impala, what do you do with this situation? Catching the landing. Catching Fiend. Sweating yeah, on the way back it. down. That's the confirm. And now Impala has a tiny little leap. Catching those landings against some of these best players is so tricky, but Impala able to do so. Now also getting a really nice combo started on that bow. Double, double recovery. Mm -hmm. Sidelines on the ground as well. Wanted to find what is going on. Impala is just dominating the neutral right now. Fiend can't get a hit. Fiend is not able to find that opening up until that neutral lane connected. But trolling out off stage, the neutral lane didn't connect. And Impala getting the ground pound. That bow ground pound is a menace. That. That, that's a menace to society, if it's a menace to anything. Impala with an amazing stock, going into an absolute flow state. And Fiend, it looks like he has finally got himself back on his feet, able to find a little bit of balance as he's able to get that stock off. He's still in a full stock disadvantage, but he decides to stick to those guitars. Right weapon for the task, the he gets that first read. I really thought that was going to connect onto more, but unfortunately it isn't. And Impala immediately with a spear spring to answer back. Yeah, that felt like it should have been more damage for Fiend, right? Because as soon as you catch that kind of a dodge with Katari's and you come back in with Downer, you usually expect to have like a three second long cutscene. But it didn't pan out that way. And now, at the moment, Fiend is in a bit of a cutscene himself, taking a lot of damage off stage. And Paula connecting a neutral light, looking for the D light, because had that connected, that would have been a nasty side of Impala going for the egg drop as well, but it's not going to be connecting. Fiend with the side signature, going for the ground pound, able to respond with the ground pound, and that should be it. Impala, as he finds another there, but he doesn't get the GZ light. That must have been a misinput. Okay, but right now Impala getting the neutral light. Let's see what's going to be the juggle here. Fiend holding on to the stage at the moment, just keeps on catching Impala's attempts to juggle him on the platforms. Oh, the D oh, I'm seeing some desperate signatures, man. That, that end sig side sig, though, able to connect. I mean, I said desperate, Fiend said, nah, these are calculated, bro. He's able to make that one count. Impala now still on his last stock now. Only one, only needs one or two attacks to be able to find the knockout. That spacing was crazy. He just barely avoided the down and he almost got spiked. But is this going to be it? And Impala got the dodge. He, he positioned himself side for it. But he backed off and didn't actually commit to it. He positioned himself perfectly to punish it. No way. Fiend, oh. barely no options. Impala, he goes for the recovery. There's still a chance, there's a chance, the chance is not gone just yet, Fiend has been able to get so much of, the, so much of this damage back, the Nair is not enough to knock out yet either. Yeah, it's Kaya, Kaya's a neutral on bow, is not going to KO anytime soon, but that's going to be it, that's a D-Light into the good recovery, and Paula holding that game down and holding that lead, but I've got to say, that got really scary at the end for Paula. Fiend was picking up a lot, of, a lot of momentum, he was picking up a lot of steam, there was a really critical moment off stage where he was like, hey, if I get this down here with Katari's right now, that's the stock, that's just Katari's off stage. Impala didn't get hit by it. He got back onto the stage just fine. But man, that was so scary for Impala in that moment. Fiend also, you know, getting blessed a little bit. Queen Eye, we already know. I don't know how much defense Queen Eye has. Seven or six, something crazy like that. Kaya not being a super strong legend either. Able to survive off of so many of those encounters where realistically, most legends, I mean, you would have gone out there. He had a lot of new opportunities where he could try and strike back. If anything, this game just shows us that, you know, this is still anyone's game. This is still anybody's game, and so I, I don't exactly know how it's going to go. I will say, though, the majority of that game, too, was in favor of Impala. That was a little bit different from what we saw in Game 1. In Game 1, I felt like the signatures are really what got Fiend over the finish line to secure the game. In that Game 2, Impala was in control of the neutral. You talked about it. You touched on it. He was just keeping space away, um, and then just found a lot more consistent follow-ups. But then Fiend just ended up picking up a little bit of steam at the end. Yeah, Fiend... Super, super good. Final stock coming out from him. I don't know what kind of beast we were seeing from Fiend there, but whatever it was, I hope to get to see more of it moving into this next game as we are loading Three, in. Two, we are going one, to be going on four. the same Legends. This time around, though, we are on the Miami Dome. Okay, Paula just backing off to the ground now, looking for the side of and able to just catch Fiend pressing aggressively on the ground. Paula, really good advantage state, and I mean, I've got to say, we already know what Fiend is capable of. He can easily match that with one dodge read with Katarius every single day of the week. And it's interesting, he's opting to go for the Katarius for the majority of the game, and I feel like the most spurious hits we see out of him have just been the signatures. Indeed, Fiend's, Fiend's uh, Katars have been doing absolute magic so far. Very, very close offstage encounter though. Neither of the players are able to pick up anything massive there though. 
Fiend able to get that side light. Still already going for the Reeves, but Impala, his, his, his uh, defense options, he's mixing them up well enough. Okay, that's a side light, that's a neutral light, and that's going to be the good cover as well, but Impala still holding on to that stock. Fiend not picking up the spear, backing off a little bit. The D-Sync doesn't come out, but Impala, no whip punish on it. No whip punish is going to be coming out. Fiend. Looking for this knockout now. I can't believe Impala is already all the way down into red. He is going to be charging up that D-Sig and Fiend, that was so close to connecting, man. I swear that signature is magnetic, but Fiend seems to be resilient. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> he, he just stayed away from that thing. He looked at it and was like, wait, can I come back onto stage now? Wait, wait, maybe now? Okay, now is my opening. Yeah, it's like V8, you know, the, <laughs> it's like the old, uh, the old 90s internet booting up sound effect. But you know what, a little bit of lag sometimes is exactly what you need. Fiend at the moment though, let's see what his next opening is going to be. Tries to go in with a side light. Impala finds the good cover that's going to be the KO without taking too much damage. And now the game, once again, is about as even as it could possibly be. He has that weapon advantage. This is the same bow that we were seeing just a game ago that was absolutely dominating Fiend. And it looks like he's trying to keep something like that going as he's constantly trying to read these escape options coming out from Fiend. We are kind of going back into neutral here though, but this time around, I mean, Impala's dominating it. Okay, holding on to the ground yet again. Gets the side light, gets the D light, but then runs off the stage with that side light a little bit too committal and now finds himself in a uh, disadvantage and Impala is more than happy to take advantage of it. Nice little combo there, backing off. Doesn't get the side in, and Fiend is able to finally get back on, but he took a lot of damage uh, when he was just stuck off stage. Yeah, took a lot of damage. Also, you know, considering this is Queen Eye, Katars is a weapon that's supposed to, you know, you throw out a lot of attacks that slowly build up damage. Queen Eye just kind of makes that irrelevant, you know, considering they have like seven strength or something crazy like that. Impala able to throw him off stage, so that D Sig, the second part of it, is actually going to be connecting, taking Fiend out. Impala with an even better lead then in the first stock, getting the recovery, looking for the neutral leg follow-up, holding back onto the ground. Nice, Sayer. Going to be trying to follow it up as well. Impala, amazing there to be able to get back up. But Fiend, he's trying to come into this, is going to be going back up to pick up that weapon, though he has the spear in hand. I smell that end sig I smell that d sig I thought a side sig was going to take it out, but Fiend used every single other signature that I thought he was going to. Impala's not falling fully as much as he used to. He's just actually slowing down and playing a little bit further back, so he's just not running into it as much as he used to. And we'll see if they actually do come out and connect um, at the end here. Just, oh my oh, god, no, that could that be was crazy. With the ground pound, 2-1 and out of nowhere. It was looking like Fiend. This game, Impala said, hold up. He goes for that offstage play, and that's 2-1 on the scoreboard. Okay, this is something I noticed the last game as well. Fiend is going for some offstage plays. That's a very nice way of putting it. I saw a spear ground pound last game that I was like, hmm, that was a little bit interesting. That GC unarmed uh, downstrong was also like a little bit interesting. It was also quite a bit of a commitment. I'm surprised there wasn't like a GC D light. I don't know why that was a decision um, as opposed to just doing that. I'm not sure if that was actually nerves that we were seeing from Fiend because it, it was either, I mean, doing what Impala did there was either like, all right, you are fumbling the bag, I'm gonna punish you hard, or you are feeling a little bit too comfortable throwing out stuff that shouldn't be connecting, I'm going to punish you hard. And it feels like Fiend, at that last couple of uh, interactions, Fiend was a little bit more insecure about his options. We were seeing a lot of signatures that weren't connecting. We were seeing he wanted Fiend. that KO, he was hungry for he it. Was, he was a little bit hungry, he was a little bit desperate, and uh, you know, when you have such good fundamentals that Fiend does, you, it's fine being a little bit desperate because you're still going to be able to connect the dots, but uh, Impala doing an amazing job at maneuvering around, especially that GCD sig that we saw at the very end, and also in moments of struggle, able to turn around those situations so quickly. Yeah, he was a little bit more patient. He wasn't really rushing in and trying to steal space away. And then also when it came to offstage, he was just really cognizant and was like, okay, cool, you did this. Not only am I going to get back onto the stage, but I'm also Three, just not going to let you get one. away with this and so for me that is a wake-up call now what is this we have the taros we have the taros on screen feed i mean he's seeing the vision he knows what he needs to do impala though already i mean we can barely talk about this legend pick because impala already in the very start of the game we're 13 seconds into the game and feed he's an orange man he's an orange but you know what it's taro so you only need a couple of swings to be able to even that one up and there it is! There's the three piece, and Impala is ba I mean, he's basically evened it out. Still, another side light there, and that is going to be completely evened out on the board now. As Fiend is looking for even more damage here, Impala. 
kind of lost a little bit of that magic that he had in the first couple of interactions, but he has the bow in hand. Still has a slight damage lead, but honestly, against Taos, you don't really have a damage lead, Abu, especially when he evens it up just like that. Now, when it comes to being off stage, oh, and Paula, that was quite the commitment with the down. Are oh, you going to make it back on? Fiend is going to make that as difficult as possible. Oh, no, not again with the DC, Fiend. Going to be able to get back up though. He has been blessed to be able to make that back up without Paula brutally punishing him this time around. Side light, sorry, D light Nair is going to be knocking him out though. Fiend, that's the second time he's thrown that out. He it let just the intrusive work. thoughts win. He it's let like, the intrusive thoughts win, man. It's like, hey, you know what? We did it with glass time. Wouldn't it be funny if it hit this time around? That being said, Fiend is going to close out that food stock on a Paula. Didn't Insane take too much option. damage. Oh, yeah. D-Light into the weapon pickup, you love to see it. Some players know Some players know the tech, most of us don't. <laughs> okay, ooh, a little bit committal there. Paula with a nice little punish. In fact, a nice, pretty good punish, in fact. Okay. Going for multiple dares, Impala putting out so much pressure with that Grandpa. Tries to go for the dare as well, but Fiend is ready this time around. Grandpa is connecting. Impala, there's so much offstage interaction for all this time. Fiend has kind of been avoiding it, but Impala oh. now pushing it more and more. He's one stock away from going in to top eight winner side for the second time. Yeah, he is cleaning up this Terrors at the moment. Finally coming back on with the Spirit Cavalry Axe on hand. What is Fiend gonna need to do to even this up? Fiend is so hungry and so desperate through these KOs, and Impala is taking full advantage of every single signature. Fiend now, he has a lot of work to do, but it all begins with taking this stock off. He needs to find it. He's on that hammer. Impala able to throw him off stage, though. This is not where Fiend likes to be. Dares aren't connecting. Impala gets that side that he's looking for the reads. Fiend getting a little bit shaken up by now. Paul is playing fast. He is not giving Fiend any space. He is constantly getting into space, and Fiend finally able to connect that down. And anything is possible at this point. You last stock of peace. You need one dodge read. You need one good, solid advantage state. And the question is, does he have that? As Impala getting so aggressive, even with no weapon in hand. No weapon in hand. Fiend, this is what he needs for the Game 5 Dream. But Impala, he's so close to already wrapping this up. Gets that ending, and it's going to be it! 3-1 on the board, and Impala makes top 8 winner side yet again for the second year in a row. He keeps the NA dream alive. I'm calling it right now. Grand Finals is going to be Codly, and it's also going to hey, be hey, Impala. Impala can hear you right now, man. Don't jinx him. I'm sorry. <laughs> My apologies. I got a little bit ahead of myself. Congratulations to Impala once again, making it into the winning side of top 8. Now, this is not the um, end for the Fiend. Of course, getting knocked down into the elimination side of things. Um, yeah, no, no. Impala, like, towards the end.